Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 83, and these are the games our diggers have for us today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have a team dig from three different diggers. DOS Games backslash Adventure backslash Mars One, which comes from Juan Burbano, James Dunn, and Fai Din. This is probably going to be Monuments of Mars, just judging by the Mars and the One and the... Uh, we got a go.bat, readall.txt, it says huge readall.txt, jeez. Okay then, uh, well, let's just run it, see what happens. Apogee Software Productions Monuments of Mars, yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> By Todd Replogel, with ideas from Scott Miller, 1991 Scenario Software. So, back when Scenario Software was still a thing. And yeah, Volume 1 First Contact, so it's not like the full game. So, actually, I should probably check the instructions. I've never actually played this before. Um, goal when playing Monuments of Mars is to explore the many levels and rescue the captive astronauts on the final level. Each level presents its own unique puzzles, treasures, traps, and secrets. It's up to you to find how best to survive each level. Equipped with a blaster gun, which requires special energy packs. Any levels encounter of a door, requires an access card. You have unlimited men while you play this game. So that's kind of convenient. You don't have to worry about extra lives. Enter is the special action key. I.e. does everything. <laughs> well, actually, no, there should be a fire button, right? Use left and right arrow keys to move, spacebar to jump, and left side shift key to fire your blaster gun. Really? <laughs> Look at this screen. The Monuments of Mars has very complex graphics and animation. Therefore, it will not run fast enough on any 8088 CPU, IBM, or compatible. In other words, you must have a system equipped with an 8086, 8286, or 8386. Isn't the 8088, like, better than the 86? Also, why the heck are F9 and F10 options for moving left and right? Who would use the function keys to move? Okay, I supposedly have the controls set to default now. So, left, right, that's my shooting, that's my jumping. Okay, let's actually do this. Uh, what's down here? Uh, apparently nothing. Okay, and also if you press the, press the shift key down, even just for a moment, when you're right up against the wall, you lose all of your shots. Uh, how do I get out? Really? Wasn't there something like F6 or something to... Yep, there you go. So if you get stuck, you have to press F6. Okay, then. I can't say I'm a fan of the level design that traps you. Yeah, I got some enemies. I'm just gonna dodge them. Save my ammo. Yes, I think we've already established jumping into pits is probably not a good idea. Okay, this screen's a little more interesting. Okay, I'm gonna shoot that guy, because that guy had... Okay. At least you do get your ammo back when you die, so it basically resets you to the state you were in when you started the area. Okay, so what does this do? Three extra shots. Okay. Now let's jump down here. And how did I not die there? <laughs> I swear I touched that thing. Um, you're in the way. And yeah, what's this? We hit enter here? Oh, it turns off the force field. Excellent. And what's this do? Whoa, that just did a whole lot of things. Um, whoops. Err. Okay, so apparently I have a card now. I guess it's for that weird looking wall to the right. Although for the moment, I'm gonna pick up these triangle things, whatever they do. Oh, that does not a screen exit. Wait, so what about up here? Okay, so... 
Uh, that's kind of weird how only very specific spots on the edge of the screen actually bring you to the next, and then not necessarily at the same height. I don't know how I feel about that. Although it does seem to be like the game is compartmentalized. Like, every particular screen is its own sort of puzzle to get through. At least that's the impression I'm getting from this. What did that actually do? Can I actually turn that back on? I can. Interesting. Okay, that just disabled a force field thingy on the floor. Because having a force field on the floor makes perfect sense. I... Grr. He <laughs> hit me just as I was firing. Okay, so if you when you press the enter key... It's very... It, it's like totally rapid, like automatically. So the moment you press enter down, you can hit it like two or three times. I only had the enter key down for a moment there, and yet it activated it twice. So you gotta be really quick with that. That probably explains why my shots drained out at the start there. I'm guessing you can only have one shot in the air at a time, and once it's gone, it allows you to fire another. So that's probably what happened there. Okay, so like some kind of switch. Okay, and then I can move this out. Okay, I think I'm getting, making some progress here. That's weird. When you touch these things, you immediately start falling. Whoa. Yeah, that's really weird. Okay. So, fall down here. Yep. Uh, okay. <laughs> you just instant death if you don't press anything. Actually, that's kind of... Uh, I have two shots left at the moment, but if I came down here with no shots, I'd have been really screwed there. Maybe not completely, but it would have been hard to get out of that. I mean, I find it odd that the enemies are actually bouncing at different points, despite the fact they should have identical points to bounce from. So they kind of have, like, different sizes going on. But how do I get that card up there? So I kind of need that. Oh! Well, apparently that's how you just walk out. Okay, so I can't say I'm a fan of the level design here because so much of it is hidden. But then at the same time, because you're dealing with just single screens and there's no life count and... Like, I mean, it'd be better if your shots also didn't register between levels because that seems to be an integral part of solving these levels. So it's like, if you burn too many of your shots, you're not going to be able to make progress. Oh, really? <laughs> well, this room looks obnoxious. Uh, how deep do these go? Uh, apparently deep enough to die. Okay, one more letter to get. Ah. Fell off. Okay, I'm guessing that was probably just points. Whoops. And I died, and I'm have to do all that again. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, so that was Monuments of Mars. Classic Apogee game. Kind of frustrating, but at the same time, you get unlimited lives, so you can try screens over and over until you win. The shots don't restore, though, and that kind of bugs me. Or do they restore? Did I end the last screen with fewer shots or more shots? That I don't know. <laughs> well, in any case, it's probably a game I'll cover on ADG eventually, but... Consider this a sort of sneak preview of things to come. <laughs> Next up, Christopher Groff has dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash drag3 underscore 12. I'm gonna guess something to do with dragons? Ooh, 32 files. Uh, let's see. Um, well, we got some files that say drag n, so probably some kind of dragon thing. I got a bunch of castle files. SVGA256.bgi. So we're dealing with something that was written with Borland programming language, either Pascal or C. But it's also you going to be using SVGA graphics from the looks of it. And the file date's just 1992. So, oh, there's a file ID.diz. Perfect. Type file ID.diz. Dragon's Domain 3, Death Rising, The End of the Trilogy, a VGA adventure game with speedy graphics. Huh. So, the end of a trilogy. That means there's two other games before whatever this one is. Hmm. 
Dragon's Domain 3, Death Rising, by Ed T. Toten III. And, yep, 92. Although this looks like um, VGA graphics, not SVGA, but I don't know. Oh. And we're playing a red dragon. <laughs> so, so far this kind of reminds me of an adventure on the um, Atari 2600. Although we also have a gauge at the side. I have no idea what we're doing. Maybe the function keys do something? Nope. Function keys don't seem to do much of anything. Uh, spacebar? Whoa, what was that? Why do I drop a bunch of lines when I... I just hit the spacebar once and it just goes through a bunch of that. Okay, I can stop moving. Oh, I can move diagonal too. Okay, so I want to use the numeric keypad. So I don't know why I'm dropping a bunch of lines, but let's try moving to another screen. And maybe another screen? Okay, so we got an enemy here. Ah. Okay, so apparently that green bar on the side is damage. How do I actually hurt this guy? Okay, apparently that's how I hurt him. I don't know what I did. I lost a ton of health, though. Do I have any other moves? Let's see here. Okay, so in my haste to try and figure out the controls to this game, I accidentally stopped the recording. <laughs> So, I actually have seen a little forward here, but I might as well go through some of it again. But yeah, I couldn't figure out any other controls, though, other than just moving around with the numeric keypad and firing whatever these are. <laughs> Which apparently can hurt whatever this is. Why am I taking damage? It's like if I just get close to him, like I can kill him, but jeez. Oh, we got a castle here. It's a green castle. Which I can't go inside. Can I breathe fire on it? There are orange lines? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, the enemies respawn? That's annoying. Oh, we actually have some different graphics here. Okay. This is very maze-like. Oh, that's a dead end. <laughs> you get... Let's try going up this way. That's a... That's a big dragon. <laughs> a big skeleton dragon with moss hanging off of it. And he's not there anymore. Okay. We don't have to fight that. Th ah, there he is. <laughs> he chasing me? Maybe not. Oh, got a torch. And it looks like there's a sword up there? Really? What do I need a sword for? I'm a freaking dragon. Actually, come to think of it, what do I even need a torch for? Couldn't I just breathe? Ah, get away from him. Ah, get away from me, you freaking ginormous skeleton moss dragon. Uh, let's see what we got over here. Uh, we got a slime monster. Because why not? And a shield, which replaces our torch. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll keep the shield. Is the torch still gonna be there? Okay, so this really is a lot like Adventure on the Atari 2600, so you gotta sort of bring items to the right place or something, I'm guessing? Oh, there's that sword. Are gonna replace the shield? Yep. Oh, hang on! <laughs> what? I am now a little red dragon, breathing swords. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Hopefully it actually does decent damage or something. Yeah, I could actually kill that guy through the wall. With my sword breath. Ah, there's the, there's the, ah, die, 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 not the dragon dying, that's me dying. Well, that's, I guess that's still technically a dragon dying. That's very bright red. And you died and I dropped back to DOS. Well, good for me. <laughs> so that was Dragon's Domain 3, Death Rising. They weren't kidding about the death part. Um, kind of interesting. It's, I, you don't really run into a lot of adventure clones. 
because that was a game for the Atari 2600, very basic, but at the same time, also not your typical Atari 2600 fare. Like, the typical game on the 2600 would be an arcade game. You're trying to get a high score of something. But Adventure was about completing goals by bringing items to various locations to make use of those items. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting seeing a game like this. Although, you'd probably have to play through it quite a bit to figure out what you're doing. And the levels are very labyrinthian, in a sense. It's very maze-like. Um, but at least it controlled okay. Well, it was kind of sticky with the controls, not really that bad. I don't know. I guess as long as this was like a freeware title, I wouldn't be anything to complain about, but... Let's actually see, is there a text file here? Um, drag3.doc. It's probably going to be pretty big, I imagine. Actually, looking through the drag3.doc file more closely, because it is a pretty big doc file, it actually admits right in here, game was inspired by adventure on the Atari game systems ages ago. Although the funny thing is he says ages ago, but at 1992, that would have made the game, what, 12, 13 years old? I mean, yeah, it's ages old now, but it wouldn't have been that old back then. Oh wow, I'm actually looking through the document here, and it seems like there's actually a lot of different dragons in the game. So this game might actually be quite bigger than than our initial, just that short bit of play led on for. I know it is a shareware game, but the guy's only asking $5 for it. So I guess in terms of just sort of the nostalgia factor for a game that's like Adventure, when you don't really have that many games like that, I guess $5 isn't that bad a fee. Especially given that this seems to be like, it seems to be a bigger game than it lets on to be. So, and it's also the third in the series. It'd be interesting to see if the second or the first one's on this CD as well. So, we'll keep a lookout for that. And to finish things off for today, Brendan of Retro Swim has dug up DOS games backslash board backslash Mon 4. Probably not Monster Hunter 4. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played a lot of Monster Hunter Generations waiting for World to come to PC. Anyways, uh... Hmm. Well, there's a readme, but again, it's giant. Um... Well, let's just run it. M-O-N... Whoops. <laughs> like... You gotta love when your hands are, like, what shifted to the side just slightly on the keyboard. Oh. This is not anything to do with monsters. This is a Monopoly clone. Interesting. With two... Di, two jail... Oh, two jail, as in go to jail. Okay, I get it. So, what am I supposed to be doing here? Wait, is there a way to, like put in, like, computer players? Yeah, I can't... S like, if there's, like, a way to set players to be computer-controlled, I can't figure it out. You know, it occurs to me it could also be a DOS box thing. If it wants me to use Control-A, then it could be that DOS box isn't interpreting the control key. This could the Control-A press the same way the operating system would, and thus it's not registering that, that. So it's possible the game does have AI support, but I can't get it working because of that. That could be what's going on here. I guess I'll just play it, I guess I'll just play it against myself, I guess. Roll the freaking dice. And there goes the income tax. So roll the dice again. So Virginia Avenue is unknown. Sells for 160. Will you buy it? I will buy it. Then next player, roll the dice. And they will buy Vermont. Next player, roll the dice. Tennessee Avenue, I will buy that. Okay, so the game is playing pretty much how I would expect a Monopoly clone to play. Ha <laughs> ha, he owes me money. Which is probably a good thing considering the fact that it's spending like crazy. And I just went back three spaces and no tax, brilliant. Just visiting. <laughs> Although now I get to stay because I rolled doubles three times in a row. And free parking doesn't do anything, no house rules for like collecting cash on there or anything. So if you try to purchase a property, but you don't have the cash for it, you can't, um, it says undo. Nope, undo doesn't seem to work in this situation. 
So you literally, if you try to buy something and you don't have the cash, you have to make it up somehow. But yeah, it plays about as you would expect, so nothing too special going on with that. Although because it's basically a clone of Monopoly, and chances are this is not licensed, I got a funny feeling this guy's either not asking for money, or tried to ask for money and then realized maybe... Maybe the owner of Monopoly is not going to be so um, happy with me. <laughs> but let me just quickly check the document file here for it. <laughs> really? 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 Okay. So this Ron McNeary guy, he says in the readme, quote, Monopoly is a registered trademark of Parker Brothers Incorporated. Their copyrights, however, have run out. That is the biggest BS I've heard in a while. <laughs> the copyright doesn't copyright doesn't work that way. Uh, I know Monopoly's old, but by this point in time, 1993, it wouldn't be old enough to have expired from copyright. So, no, no, you are not. <laughs> You are not getting away with that. Although the guy isn't trying... I'm looking through the file, though. The guy is not trying to sell it for money, which is probably good, because if he tried to do that, I'm willing to bet Parker Brothers would have had uh, something to say about that. But in any case, so that was Automon 4.0, meant to be... Well, you know, the fact that it's called Automon suggests that it's supposed to be like an automatic Monopoly game. But again, I couldn't get the automatic function working, probably because of how DOSBox is detecting the keystrokes there. But it would be kind of interesting to see how it would automatically play. But, oh well. In any case, it does play as you would expect, so it's not that bad then. <laughs>